Hello and welcome to this episode of The Church Doctrine, the long-form, no-holds-barred, no-radio-ID interview series that we started way back in April. I said way back in April? Back in April. We're going to go ahead on over to the Dude Maker Hotline and say hello to Isaac Padilla. Isaac is the proprietor of Catholic Warrior Fitness. Now, this is interesting. Uh, if you're looking for a fitness coach and you're a Catholic guy and you don't know where to start or what to do or what kind of a routine or regimen, well, this is your guy. But I think Isaac and I are going to talk a lot more about a lot more than that. Isaac, thanks for taking time out to be with us here today on the Mike Church Show. How you doing, brother? Thank you, Mike. I'm doing well, brother. I appreciate it. And uh, if you don't mind, I actually would like to start just with a quick prayer to set the tone a little bit. Absolutely. I've been, yeah? My favorite. Okay. Okay. Here we go. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Bless you. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's my favorite prayer, Mike. I always like to start with that, brother. Did you say in Spanish? No, no, I didn't say. Did it sound like Spanish? No. What did you? What, what, what did you say? Because I'm not familiar with the prayer. So this is uh, well known as called the Jesus Prayer, otherwise known as the Desert Prayer. Yes. Because it's prayed by the Desert Fathers, but it goes like this: Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And it's super simple, and it's to me, it's just very profound because it, it kind of reflects like my journey and my reversion and. Uh, you know, I'm from the desert. I'm from New Mexico, so it's kind of pretty it's fitting. You know, desert prayer. I love it, man. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to hit you with this one. I'm going to do it anyway. When Good. I was a uh, when I was a, when I was a young man, a little boy, actually, when I was growing up, uh, we didn't have cable TV. The closest thing we had was UHF. Uh, but they came out with this thing in the in the '70s called closed circuit TV, and mm -hmm. I remember getting to watch some uh, Muhammad Ali's late uh, late fights, and uh, this just I don't know why, but it stuck with me for the rest of my life. Uh, there we go, like and according to the Las Vegas Boxing Commission, our referee tonight is Carlos Padilla. So. <laughs> Uh, and I always loved the name. I, I, so someone would introduce themselves to me as Padilla, and I'd go like, are you related to Carlos Padilla? Yeah. And, of course, Carlos is a very common name, so I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, but probably not the boxing judge. <laughs> He's probably like my long-lost cousin. Bro. The Spaniards were, were all over here in New Mexico. They went to Spanish. <laughs> Spanish. He, cool. he, he refereed the famous Thrilla in Manila. Did he really? Yes. Wow. He was the referee for the, I want to say also that Carlos Padilla stayed in boxing for a long time. I think he was around when Mike Tyson was fighting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, you started this uh, the, this website, obviously, and this adventure and this venture, Catholic Warrior Fitness. But I yeah. think what's the most important or the fascinating thing, and I got a very, I didn't get a 30,000 foot view, I got a 75,000 foot view, is mm -hmm. learning a little bit about Isaac and who Isaac is and yeah. uh, where Isaac came from and then where he is now. So so I asked him, like, dude, they tell me, uh, Magdalene told me that oh, he's a revert. So I asked Isaac you know, off, off mic and off camera, said, you a revert? Uh, kind of, but not really. So you, you're not really a, re a revert. T t tell our audience, our listeners, what you told me. Yeah. So, you know, I was telling Mike, uh, I, I basically might as well be a convert because – um, in my reversion, you know, I didn't know anything about Catholic faith at all. It wasn't even like, you know, I was raised culturally Catholic. And I think that happens to a lot of, you know, Latino households and stuff. Like my dad is Mexican. Uh, my mom is Hawaiian and Spanish. And so when I was raised, you know, it, it was just the cultural norms that they were taught, but they never knew their faith like at all, you know, and there's nothing for them to really teach me and my sister so growing up, it was just going through the motions. It was, uh, you know, going to mass every Christmas and Easter, maybe some, most of the time we didn't even make it there. Um, and I really just had like this general idea of God, but it didn't really stick, you know, and that led to a whole bunch of issues later on in my life. My parents ended up getting a divorce when I was about 11 years old in that time period. And that was the start of, you know, me living like a heathen, like I told you. <laughs> 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 On camera, you know? 
that was uh, a pretty tough time period in my life. And unfortunately, it kind of, at that point, once that big moment catalyst happened in my life, that's when I, I took a spiral, you know? And I mean, at that point, I was already starting to like get a problem with pornography very early on. Uh, and I'm very open about this, Mike, because I think a lot of guys struggle with this stuff, a lot of young men, particularly in our church. Yes. And I want to share this with everybody because, you know, I'm a real guy and I have a much different story because I, I lived a crazy life. Um, so that kind of led into me dabbling with drinking and getting into drugs eventually very early on. And um, I was also a musician. You know, that was my big thing, you know, and that's what I wanted to chase. That was what I fell in love with. Um, my dad was pissed off because I grew up as an athlete. I was a baseball player. My dad was a great baseball player. And I ended up quitting baseball ah. uh, to pursue music, you know. And uh, that was a, a big point in my life where, like, a lot of things changed at about maybe 13, 14 years old. And then I just took this trajectory of chasing that lifestyle. Fast money, fame, the women, all that. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Yep. And, uh so that moved me out to California. I moved out to California at, a, at about 19 years old. And this was after dropping out of college and, you know, doing the whole failure here in the hometown. And when I was in California, I ended up meeting my now wife. Her name is Maria out of all names, right? <laughs> She's through. always there, isn't she, Mary? She's mm -hmm. always there for guys like me and you. She's always there. And yeah. and, and and you 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 never you never know where she's going to appear. But when you mm -hmm. look backwards, you go like, "Man, I am so lucky, so blessed that she showed up then." Huh? Yep. Right? 100%. I mean, she's I I always I attribute my reversion and you know, like I said, it might as well be a conversion to our lady because in the background, just to give you some context here, um, my dad was the first one in our family to revert back to the church. He had a very strong reversion and it was pretty unbelievable for the rest of our family because my dad was a certain kind of guy and he lived that way for a long time and we all judged him. It happens to, you know, a person when they convert or they revert initially, I went through it too, but you know, in his heart as a father, me, his son, he, he was probably just, hurting inside and wanted me to come back to the church because he knew the truth and he knew that if i didn't then my soul is obviously going to be in a lot of trouble and i'm out there in la and who knows what would happen to me and so in the background mike what he was doing was praying a daily rosary every single day he didn't share this with me by the way until after my reversion he didn't even tell me any of this prayed a daily rosary every single day for two years straight with the same intention every single day. And here comes our lady. And she saved me, man. Over there, little by little, this the grace that was given to me, just like a little feed drop in, little by little. And um, I had a very spectacular reversion back into the faith. It was very dramatic. I went through a lot of legitimate spiritual attacks and demonic attacks initially. I mean, it was big, man. It was a uh, it was a life change that I would have never expected in a million years. And that's the power of Our Lady and what she can do to a soul and bring her back to her son. That's what she did to me. You know. Where were you living in California? I was out in a place called Oxnard. So it's it's about an hour north of Los Angeles, right on the coast. There's a little uh little coastal beach city and it has a bunch of Mexicans in there, so I felt right at home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been to Oxnard, so I, I actually I know where uh, where uh, where Oxnard is. Uh, California. I tell uh, uh, people this when I meet people from California, California, and I'm like, I don't know how you got so politically screwed up because <laughs> California is the most beautiful, picturesque state in the entire union. You got ocean, you got lake, you got 
you got a you got a you got a prairie, you got mountains, yep. you got some of the biggest mountains, you had the biggest trees on the continent, you yep. have some small beautiful trees. Uh, they grow garlic, they grow olives in California, would you believe it? You don't need to get olive oil from Spain, you can get it from California. They <laughs> farm cattle in California. There's nothing they won't grow. This idea that California can't, uh, you know, that there's there's uh, there's water issues and rain issues. That's man-made primarily. Most yeah. of that's man-made, but it is the most beautiful, uh, beautiful state. You go to California, start in San Diego, man, go PCH one, and just drive up the coast. Don't it's get beautiful. on the stinking interstate. Just get it. Just take PCH one. You'll get tired of it after about four or five hours a day, and then you'll want to stop somewhere, right? And yeah. there's plenty of places to stop. I, 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 I just, I love California. So you left California. How was I that? I mean, you know, I, I agree with you too, Mike. When I was there. Because of, my dad would always tell me, like, oh, you know, the political issue in Los Angeles and, and all that's real. I mean, it, it's unfortunate because it's become, you know, kind of sickening with what's going on politically. But the state itself is just gorgeous, especially Oxnard. I love the area. Um, but, you know, what happened was, we, like a lot of people in California, this is extremely expensive, man. And I grew up in the desert next to nobody around me with a lot of space with, uh, I would say, better quality of living for the income you're making. Um, you can buy a house out here. It's not it's not crazy. Like right now, me and my wife are building a, a house here in New Mexico, and uh, we can never do something like that in California. I mean, unless I was a millionaire or something like that <laughs> to customize a, a house like that. But, I mean, ultimately, that was the reason we came back this time. But at the very beginning of my reversion, my wife – well, she was my girlfriend at the time. We were living there and we moved back to New Mexico at the start of the pandemic in 2020, mm -hmm. right? And the reason then was because my, my wife was pregnant at the time and we didn't really know each other, honestly, at that point in our lives. And unfortunately, we ended up losing that child when we moved back here to New Mexico for the first time. And that was the catalyst for really everything. Like that was the pinnacle moment of my story and my reversion of when it happened. Like that was my foot of the cross right there. You know what I mean? So losing yeah. a child it was tough man. It, because I was, I was just a punk kid at the time and I was chasing music and I thought my career was going so well. I had millions of plays. I thought I was going to be this big famous artist and you know, I was doing it in my mind. And then here I go, I, I fall in love with this girl. And this, again, this is all grace, Mike, like this is God putting these things in my life. She, he put her in my life, you know, my wife. And uh, I only knew her for a few months. You get her pregnant. Don't know what to do. I'm a young kid. I'm like 20 years old. And uh, the only thing I can think of is, well, I'm going to go back home to my family with her. And I'm going to be a man and try to figure this out. And so that was a, like step one. And then when we get there, I move into my mom's old house, in her, my old room. It was very humbling, man. Like, it's funny. Christ will warn us of this. Like, you want to follow me? get rid of everything. I'm going to take everything from you and the world's going to hate you and spit on you. And like, I truly went through that. You know what I mean? Like it was tough, man. Moving back in with your parents is always humbling. It's tough. <laughs> it, doesn't, it's tough. it doesn't matter who they are. You move in, <laughs> mom, do uh, you still have my room? Oh yeah, sure. And they'll add, they'll pass it off. Like, Oh, it's a great, yeah, sure. Come on in. And then of course, two weeks in, they're like, ah, you left the two the top off the toothpaste again. Uh, <laughs> And then you start getting all those things back from when you were a kid. Um, our listeners are going to be screaming at me right now going like, come on, TKD, ask him what he played. You said musician. What did you play? Or or were you a, um, uh, were you a dub stepper? No, no dub stepper. Right. It's interesting. It's a weird. Okay, this is weird because like in sixth grade is when I started to play music. I grew up playing baseball very competitively. I played across the nation like in Puerto Rico and New York and Florida. Like that was what I was going to do with my life. That was, was you look set. like a baseball player. <laughs> That's the beard. I thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you got the broad shoulders. Like, you know, you look like a batter, like a, like a baseball player. Thank you. I was, I was a cleanup hitter, man. I was a third baseman and a pitcher. I would bat cleanup, on, you know, four spot, but you know, that was, that was the whole journey. And, and in sixth grade, I started playing the trumpet, which is sounds like the most random thing ever. Right. So the trumpet, and um, it's weird, Mike, like 
I got really good at it because I'm very competitive. I'm an athlete and I just wanted to compete. And that applies with really like everything in my life. But I got super honed in on the trumpet and I fell in love with music so much that by the time I got to ninth grade, I taught myself how to play piano. I taught myself how to sing. And I was also producing, like making beats and, and making my own music, but I was incorporating the trumpet with my music. Mm-hmm. And I've always had a taste for R and B and hip hop. Those are my favorite genres. So what I was doing was trying to blend this like fusion of R and B, hip hop and my trumpet because I was a jazz guy. Mm-hmm. So ninth grade comes around, I quit baseball, pursue music full time. And I got so good at playing my trumpet that it rewarded me a full ride scholarship to the university of New Mexico. Yeah. in Albuquerque. Mm. So that was like, you know, I didn't really have a game plan, but my plan a was I'm going to make it with music because by the time high school came around, I was already an, an artist and I was making songs and trying to put songs out and stuff. And then I developed this like local following. Um, and that kind of, catapulted me to college and then i hated college i was like this is the stupidest thing ever and i dropped out like three months in <laughs> so what, what, you know, what was your music your musician name did you have a name yeah so my musician name was cavello and it was spelled k-a-w-e-l-o and the idea behind it was uh you know my mom's side is hawaiian and there's a, a lineage of hawaiian blood on our side that was related to a certain king and his name was Cabello, and that was like our family lineage. But so yeah, man, that was that's the music background on me. So, so uh, have you been to? Uh, I assume you've been to Hawaii a couple times. And honestly, I was I was kind of like pushing the whole Hawaiian thing super hard because it was so different. But really, I, I'm more Mexican than I am Hawaiian. Man, I'm, I'm maybe freaking five percent. I'm Mexican. No. <laughs> well, uh, there's, there's, there's. Uh, most people don't know this because they're stupid and they don't bother to to read or to learn anything. But there is a very distinct culture and uh, uh, inheritance, if you will, in the Hawaiian people. You know, Saint yeah. Damien of Molokai, when mm-hmm. he moved, when the bishop assigned him to the leper colony. Uh, he had no intention of staying there, but he fell in love with. Well, of course, there were there were people there that weren't Hawaiians, but he yeah. fell in love with the with, with the Hawaiian people and with uh, you know the, uh, the the Hawaiian culture. Hawaiians before we came along had kings, as you see, Cavello. Yeah. They had kings, they had queens, they had a hierarchy. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool, uh, really, the, the study uh, of Hawaii and, and the, the kind of the history. You know, when the sailors would leave from California on their, or, or from the, the U.S. And, and, and would head in that direction, and they knew that they, if they could get to Hawaii, it wasn't just modern people that looked forward to going to Hawaii. <laughs> if you were a yeah. sailor guy and then in the 19th century, you looked forward to going to Hawaii yeah. and then on to the Cook Islands and all that so um i i, I the, the reason i asked about hawaii is just wanted to see, did your mom kind of tell you a little bit of the uh, of the history of where you came, or where half of her side came from yeah. no absolutely it's uh you know it's it's really it was ingrained in me and my sister when we were growing up because my grandmother is is the one who's really like fully hawaiian and even a step further my great grandmother her name was edith mckenzie and she was a very high profile individual in, in the islands because she was responsible for connecting a lot of Hawaiian genealogy. She was a professor at, at UH and that's what she, she did. She was a genealogist. And um, so she's held responsible for connecting like hundreds of family lines through her work. And, uh, you know, she was I remember when she passed away, she was even given like a, a state award, like she was recognized and honored by the state. Like it was a big deal. And so it's very it's very interesting to learn that side of my family. But I just say, like, realistically, you know, um, I would really try to just push that angle as, a, as an artist because it was like a marketing tactic more than anything. Right, right. So but it's cool, man. I appreciate it and I respect it because it is still part of my culture. So You know, a Congresswoman Gabbard's family is, uh, is Hawaiian. Yeah. And her dad is... Hawaii's Captain Catholic. I mean, this guy led the yeah no he led the charge against uh, you know, Hawaii was the first state to have 
gay marriage. Uh, mm -hmm. But on Mr. Gabbard's watch, they defeated that that amendment several times in several elections. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He and and he, um, I believe he's still there and he's still alive. Uh, all right. Well, tell me about them. The, the okay. You talked a little bit about your dad about yeah. the, uh, the the Mexican side. Is he first generation American or second? Mm -hmm. He's second, yeah. Right. So his his mother, I believe, is first generation American, but he grew up in a place called uh, El Paso, Texas, right here on the border. Oh yeah, um, you familiar? Yeah, I'm right here. I mean, Las Cruces, New Mexico, is 30 minutes away from the border, right here next to Juarez, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, my dad, he grew up standard, typical Mexican household, um, and you know, growing up on all the goodies, chorizo, sopa, all that. <laughs> well, this, the, the stamp of the missionaries, the Catholic missionaries, is all over New Mexico and Arizona and Texas. And where you live, Las Cruces, Las Cruces, uh, the, the cross, right? Or the crucifix. That's right. That's right. The crosses. Okay. Now, now, let's talk about, uh, all right, so you revert to the faith. Um, tell me about Isaac, the fitness guy. Okay. So you, so, I mean, this, <laughs> so basically you throw the, you put the trumpet back in the closet and get the baseball bat back out? <laughs> So something like that. Uh, so I mean, what happened when when I reverted, Mike? Honestly, is uh, I was so convicted in my soul about music, particularly because I knew, and like a lot of things, when you revert and the grace is given to you, and you start to see things clearly over time, I had the real realization in my heart that not only was my music sinful, but I was also causing others to sin through my music on a massive scale. Right. And I truly believe in my heart. I mean, like everything else, that's something that when I die, I'm going to have to face our Lord and answer to him for, because I did, you know, and I have songs with millions of plays with explicit content that is definitely, or has definitely caused many souls to sin. So that, that sat really heavy on my conscience for a long time. And, you know, it's probably part of the spiritual warfare aspect when I'm first reverting you know, maybe demons are trying to use that and shame me and stuff. But I'm saying like it was a big deal for me during that time because I felt like I was going to face this big crossroads, which was my life's work. I only had music. That was my only plan. I didn't have any backup plan. I never thought about being a coach or, or any of this stuff. You know, it was uh, so this is truly like a mission appointed by God. I, I truly believe in that 100 percent. And so after about two years worth of trying to make cleaner music and trying to like fit it into this mold. I still had that head to head battle, like that wrestling with, with God. And man, I would get frustrated and angry, angry with him. And I would talk to him about it. I would be angry with him talking to him. There'd be points in my car where I'd be in tears, like asking him like, God, why would you make me so good at this? If you, if you don't want me to do this, you know, that was like, uh, the conversations that I would have. And at a certain point, I All realized Catholic artists have had them brother. Sure. I'm what, sure. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah. You gave me all this. What do you want me to do with it? <laughs> no, I, I, I can completely sympathize tears yeah. and all. Well, I'm an artist. I actually am an artist. I have a degree in commercial art, but uh, my superpower is taking oxygen and making radio shows out of it. So let's uh, see you try and do that. Right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I've done it, Isaac. I've been there I, 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 probably last week. Yeah. So you, yeah. And you probably are still in some in some ways. Please continue. Yeah, man. I mean, it's so I knew that I would I would reached that point and it bubbled up so much where I was like, all right, well, I got to make a decision. You know, like I can't keep just riding the fence. Like I'm either going to do it or I'm not. And finally I reached a point in my life and I, I never thought that I would get here, especially with music where I let it go in my heart. And I, I truly did. It took a lot of discernment, a lot of tears, a lot of, I was fighting it, but I genuinely just, I gave it to God. And I remember distinctively, it was just one day I was in my car and after that whole battle, I just thought to myself, like, I am so blessed for the fact that he gave me an opportunity and saved me from the life I was living. And I, I thought about this thought. I was like, had I died in that state, it would have been over for me for eternity. Right. And he didn't allow it. 
And so I thought about that and I'm like, you know what, if I really want to serve him, then maybe this is what, maybe this is what you're calling me to do. God here. It's yours. It's yours. Anyway, who am I to say, you know, give it to me. I want to do it. You know, as, as we do, as I, we got do it, this. I, I got this. I got it. this. <laughs> yeah. you know? So I, I genuinely just manned up and I gave it to him. And so around that time, this is what's really interesting because this ties into how we got to Catholic warrior fitness and how this happened. It's amazing how God does this to a soul when you're genuine about it is I started a brand new Instagram, which is the Catholic warrior fitness Instagram. This was last year around like May, somewhere around there. So literally like a year ago. Right. And the whole idea was I wanted to get away from this old world, like my old Instagram for my music. I was like, I don't want anything to do with these people anymore. I just want to start fresh, total, total fresh start. Right. And, um, I started posting this content about me working out and I would kind of implement like Catholic ideas into it. And I was like, well, I've never really seen like any fitness guy or people working out and incorporate the faith. And so I was just trying it out, you know, and I posted this one Instagram reel in particular. It's still on my Instagram. I kept all this stuff so I can have documentation <laughs> so people can go check. Right. Um, there's this reel that I posted about me making a conscious decision to leave the commercial gym. You see, I found <laughs> like, you, <laughs> dude, you got one with 230,000 views. Yeah, I'd, I'd say just to interrupt quickly um, with, a, uh, with 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 Isaac. Uh, I'm going to do it. Isaac Padilla with Isaac Padilla here, the Catholic Warrior Fitness dude. Uh, um, uh, an amazing story uh, that we're hearing here. Um, but I'd say that our Lord went. I got this. Uh, yeah. uh, follow me, Junior, and I will make this uh, come happen. So it looks yeah. to me as though that he uh, uh, that the door opened and you were put in some kind of a position where yeah. uh, you were able to do something that's not blasphemous and uh, it doesn't counter the faith, and mm -hmm. still you're building an audience. That's uh, that's a beautiful thing. It's a blessing, man. It, really it is, is a blessing. It's a grace. It's a serious yeah. grace. It really is. I'm super, like, to this day, I still feel, and I struggle with this feeling of not feeling, uh, like, worthy. Because I think back to my life, and I'm like, why did you choose me? Like, why did you, why me? And I, I don't say that in, like, a, why me? Like, you know, I, I genuinely am curious. I'm like, I'm like God, like, out of, out of all the souls in the world, like, out of all the things that could have happened in my life, and the way that my life was headed, I just asked him like, hi. And, and I, that's one thing that I hope is revealed to me when I die. I'm sure it will be. But uh, the way I see it is he just stacked up a, a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. And it's my obligation now to make sure that I fulfill that as best I can to serve him. And that's my fiat. So it's it's not so much, folks, uh, why me? Why did you do this to me? Why? I think it's more uh, that why? Why did you bless me so tremendously? I'm yeah. not worthy. So what do you want me to do with it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's that feeling. So, but yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing how it happened to Mike because like the, the one that really set it off, that reel that I posted was when I made the decision to leave the commercial gym for good, which is a big decision for me. And um, I had a great conversation with a priest, um, my confessor in California, really. And he finally, after my last confession with him, he was like, dude, why are you still going to the gym? <laughs> the <same place. laughs> he's like, he's like, you come here every, and I'm so glad he called me out. We need priests like this. It's amazing. Call me out. He's like, every week you come here. And you confess the same sins to me. And he asked me, he's like, do you want to be doing this when you're 35, 10 years from now? Do you want to be doing this when you're 40? He's like, I have to say this to you because it's the truth. He's like, you're putting yourself in a position where you're going to fall. It's always in the same place. And so I, I had that struggle with lust. It was, and still is the primary struggle that I have in my spiritual life. But, you know, at its height was in the commercial gym. 
all the time. And if you've never been to a commercial gym these days, you know, you would know why if you walked in there. So, and so I was convicted. And I was like, sense is everywhere. <laughs> That's right. I was like, he's right though. You know, he, he called me out and I'm like, now I got to make that choice. And, and I did. And so I made a video about it because I, I then started to work out in the park at like four in the morning with my dog, with my, uh, with my little shepherd. And, um, uh, I posted a reel about it, and that reel was the one that blew up like crazy, and that was the start of Catholic Warrior Fitness. Okay, so, right, now tell me about the reel. What was what, what do you think? What was so special about this reel? Uh, uh, dude walks dog in park at four a.m. <laughs> 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 what? Yeah. Obviously, obviously, yeah. I haven't seen it. So, right. <laughs> what was so? What do you think? What was so special about it? I think this is what it was. Is uh, I was doing a voiceover on the reel and I was explaining what I just explained to you and the reason why I decided to leave the commercial gym because I was struggling with lust. Okay. And the video, I'm, I'm just working out in the park. I'm doing push ups. I'm banging out freaking wide grip pull ups. My little doggy's right there. <laughs> and, um, and so it's that with me narrating why. And so half of the comments are, you're awesome, bro. I really respect that. That's amazing. I'm glad that you're doing it. I couldn't agree more. There's like literally 2,000 comments on the post, right? So half of them are that. And then the other half are, oh, man, what, what a weenie. And he's what a loser. What a nerd. This and that. He's so weak. He can't be in there. He can't keep your eyes off the girls. I, so it was very, uh, obviously, it was a very hot topic that I didn't really know I was going to push that hot button on. I think that's what happened. Well, you know, I, I I would say this, and to people listening at home, uh, uh, Mike Church here with Isaac Padilla, Catholic Warrior Fitness. Uh, I would say to people listening at home, uh, especially dudes out there, think of it like this: No, I can go into that strip club because I pray and I have a great confessor and I have a great prayer life, and I'm yeah. super virtue. I'm super virtue man. <laughs> No, dude, you're not. And why risk yeah. it? Right. This is how Confessor told me. He goes, Mike, why risk it? Yep. I had a good yep. priest, too, a good Confessor. And he goes, why run the risk? You can get the same, if you have to have whatever it is, find it somewhere else where you're not you know, you're not at risk. And then somebody's going to go, because, you know, there are super tratties out there that are so much more pi pious than me and you, right? Well, oh, I don't have those temptations. And I, I, I use it to go in there and, and to beef up my battle against concupiscence. Man, dude, God bless you. Mary keep you. Congratulations. You're like one out of a million. And you might be a liar, too. You might not, that, that may not be true. Um... Uh, I'm with you. You know, I had a friend that told me back and this back back in the 80s. He told me, and this was he was a very laid back, holiday Nova Sordo Catholic. Uh, no, back in the uh, in, in the in the 90s, and he told me that they came to the realization that and they had a gym where they worked. Oh man. And they came, like, they work in a high-rise building in the, in the bottom floor so they could work out in the morning or in the afternoon and go home or, or before work. Yeah. And they told me that it was so bad with the women, the way they dressed, that they made a buddy system. Mm -hmm. That they went together, that they went, like, in pairs. Yep. So that, hey, man, dude, eyes back on the barbell. <laughs> You know, uh, actually, you know, because you, 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 in, in a situation like that, you might actually benefit from having a, a, a good friend to, you know, kind of pull you away from that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you hit it perfect, Mike. Um, that was, and it took a while for me to see that, but you know what it did ultimately too, and I think this is for a lot of guys, is uh, it put a mirror up to myself about what was true about the gym for me inside and what was not. So another thing that I realized after I was convicted when I spoke to that priest is that I had a certain enjoyment of the vanity aspect of it as well. Like this would also fuel this pride in me because when I was there, it wasn't just, okay, there's some girl walking and she looks good and my eyes are wondering and, you know, soon enough now I'm in, in my mind, I'm committing mortal sin. Right. But it was, it was also the fact that I was wanting people to have eyes on me, including the women. And, and when I sat and thought about that, I was like, why am I doing this? Like I'm going to this place. There's like a kind of a pleasure in it where I'm like, I, I dress well and you know, I look good when I'm pumped up and I'm, I'm showing off essentially. Like I'm showing off to these girls 
And I'm also in here when I'm a married man. And, right. And that's hard. Dude, that's a hard freaking talk. And, and I'm all about that for men is we have to have these conversations with ourselves because if we continue like the delusion and living the lies like that, it, you're going to believe it over time unless you, you know, and thank God there's, there's great priests that will step in the way and tell you the truth, but we can be that for any soul that we come across, you know, to just step up and, and tell the truth. Does that change my life? You know. It says on your site, uh, I am Isaac Padilla. I'm a Catholic men's fitness coach. My mission, build Catholic warriors for Christ's kingdom. That's right. Is there a routine? And are you like your private coach? Do you do classes? Do you go like, hey, I will come to your church and bring guys out on a Saturday. And we're going to go through a workout and I'm going to teach you this. Tell yeah. our listeners, our viewers, how does it work? Absolutely. So I'm working on, you know, a local thing here. Okay. The exorcist in the diocese, I'm, I'm working with him directly to try to, you know, work with a, a group of men here. But no, my my business model is all online. So I have, you know, guys from all over the world now that I can work with directly. And my program is very simple, Mike. It, it consists of three pillars, right? It's the spiritual aspect, which is the most important. Absolutely. Because God comes first before all this. It's the physical aspect, right, which is the actual training and working out. And then it's the nutritional aspect, which is we got to make sure that, you know, you know, it's going in your body. That's 90 percent of the problem for a lot of men that are facing these uh, these issues. Right. But ultimately, it's very simple. We are tracking nutrition so that we know we're reaching our goals every single day. Right? I'll show guys how to do that. Um, we're tracking our workouts. I'll customize a workout plan depending on where this guy's at in his life and his experience level. And then also I have three spiritual daily non-negotiables in the program to help us build virtue as Catholic men. And what's, what's amazing is once these things come together for a man, for a Catholic man, that is, that's the beauty right there. They need to work together. You know, we can't just be, you know, you can't be a theologian and then you're 50 pounds overweight and you're a father and a husband because you've got business to handle. You know, they got to work together. And that's my philosophy. You know, I'd like to keep things simple because simple works long term. You know what I mean? Well, uh, for those uh, watching, uh, I, I have a saying around here, unless he has a thyroid problem, never trust a fat priest. Uh, <laughs> if, if your priest ain't fasting and praying for you, then he's, <laughs> he's probably not a, probably not for you. Uh, all right. Well, let me OK, let me uh, let me tell you a little bit about me and what I do every day. First of all, on on your on the nutrition plan. Can we have bacon? You can have bacon, man. All right, we just gotta know what's going in. All right, I can, all. I can do this. All right, I can do this. <laughs> that was that, that was a, that was that was a, that's a deal breaker. No bacon, no deal. Okay, so uh, I get up at three o two a.m. every morning because the show starts at six, and sure. I developed this routine uh, probably twelve years ago, maybe uh, fifth, maybe even longer than that. But this yeah. current one that I have, I, I developed this routine. Uh, five years ago um, and then I was blessed with the opportunity I left the studio and I'm not at the studio any longer uh, so I'm not making a 20 uh, 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 22 minute commute instead I commute right here to this room from that one about 75 feet away um, uh, so but it gave me an opportunity I never had before which is I get up at three I have a very strict regimen of prayers that I go through, and I do them every morning re religiously. No, and, and unless it's a season like Lent or something, I, mean, I might have a little a little alteration in it. And I, I, I take a shower, and then I come out and I, and I and I prepare what we're going to have for coffee. I'll grind it up or whatever in the morning, and then out the door I go. And I walk about three quarters to seven eighths of a mile. And during the walk, I say the rosary. And I get to look up at the sky when it's when it's really clear. It's beautiful. And I can uh, I'm learning I learn constellations. But the main thing is Isaac is I do the walk and I don't try to. I don't try to get cardio in. I'm old. I'm in my early 60s. Uh, I mean, I look it, but I'm in my early 60s. But I am moving my hips, I'm exercising, and I walk at a pretty decent pace. And then uh, when the rosary is done, you know, I come back in and uh, water up, and that's pretty much my exercise for the day other than walking around here. How am I doing so far? It's not, you know what, 
it sounds pretty dang good. I like that you have this routine and structure first and foremost, Mike. Um, I also like that you're praying the rosary on the walk. That's my get down to. I love to pray my rosary outside. That's awesome. Um, I'll say this too, man. Walking is a fantastic tool that is so underutilized by a lot of men, especially with fat loss and weight loss specifically, because one, it's very low intensity. Everybody can go outside and walk for 20 minutes and it's beautiful. Go outside, take a walk, enjoy what God has created. It's amazing what a 20 minute walk will do. Um, the only thing I will say, and, and I'm not saying for you in particular, but this could apply for other men, is the biggest thing that I always find with a guy who's struggling that comes to me and, and wants some help, it's the nutritional aspect. Mm. That's, that's a massive part. Because why? We're married to the nutritional part of, of everything because it's our life. It's food, man. And I grew up a fat Mexican kid. I love food. I love eating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I get it. So, uh, But the, the, the thing there is what most men lack is the understanding of how much is going into their body on the day to day. I did until I had my first coach and he showed me, he had me track a day worth of my food. And in my mind, I had the best intentions. I was like, I'm eating healthy. I'm choosing the grilled chicken sandwich. I'm doing blah, blah, blah. And I had this goal of losing weight, mm -hmm. but at the end of my day, I was shooting over by a thousand calories. And so a lot of guys struggle with that. So I would say with that in your routine, bacon's all right. We just got to know those numbers, Mike, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now, Isaac, tell me about some of the people that have come to you and maybe thought that their case was hopeless. But now today you're like, yeah. and I don't want to turn this into an infomercial, but seriously, uh, I mean, you've been given this talent now uh, and, 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 and you've, you've, you've gone from the music now into the, in, into the fitness. Does mm -hmm. it work for uh, you got success stories? Yeah. A lot of them. I mean, for, for you guys to check them out, I would say on my Instagram, I have a whole list of the transformations so far, but I will say this, like it is, the most fulfilling thing I've ever experienced in my life. When I initially talk to a guy, and it's funny because he oftentimes sounds like the old me, so I see myself in the guy when I talk to him. And th there's things that he can't see yet. And it's, it's fascinating. It's like, you know, he, usually they're feeling down about themselves because they're overweight, there's some sort of problem in their life, they're lacking respect from their wife, they're lacking respect from men in the workplace, they're at a low point. And so I think about myself when I was at that point in my life and how I felt and how I externalized those feelings inside. And that's what these guys do at first. But I, I keep in mind, I'm like, they just can't see yet what's going to happen. Like, and so I break down the program and the guys that are really serious about it, they're always quiet and they come to work and they're ready to go. And so two, three months later, the best feeling as a coach is literally watching their entire energy shift their their how they speak to me right seeing them smile when i get back on a call again and then i'm tracking them week to week and then seeing a guy's picture go from you know starting at 250 pounds he's 50 pounds overweight three months later he's getting lean and we're about to get shredded up for the summer it's because it's like when a man does something like that it's more than just the physical aspect of it it's his respect for himself. And it's like, I watched light go back into a guy's eyes from what, from where he starts. And it's the most amazing thing, man. Now I'm at a point where I've been blessed to have a lot of clients and, and brothers inside of this program to where it's just happening week after week after week. There's a new guy that started months ago, months ago, that's just completely changed his life. And like I said, it, it's much more than just the physical aspect of it, like looking and feeling good. I'm not the coach that's focused on getting you abs for the summertime. I don't care. I'm focused on how you're showing up in your vocation as a Catholic man, because like I said earlier, that is what comes first. It's just, we need the other things as well. We can't just have one or the other. And when these guys figure that out, it's beautiful. Man. So it's awesome. you, you see uh, building Catholic warriors for Christ. Uh, we talk about this all the time here, man. I started a radio station with a lot of sweat and blood and my own money and tears eight years ago. The Crusade Channel. Who named something Crusade in, 20, in, in 2015? Uh, 
Well, here, well, here we are, eight years later, and still trying to to, to, to find a, a footprint where people go like, "Wow, you guys have an actual radio station." Yes, it's not a podcast; it's an actual radio station. You can tune it in anywhere. In any event, uh, Crusade. But we talk about New Christendom all the time. I have a podcast I do every day, New uh, New Christendom Daily. Uh, yeah. So when you say you're preparing the, or you are uh, building Catholic warriors for Christ's kingdom. Um, mm -hmm. Warriors to do what? To just practice their vocation? Because that's that, is that warrior warrior in enough? I think, like I said, Mike, it has to be all three. And depending on where a guy's at in his life, first and foremost, it comes with full submission to, to Christ, which right. is the hardest possible thing for all of us to fully submit to the will of God. But he's calling us to be perfect. This is what I love about Catholicism and what drew me into it so much is that it's not the wishy-washy, do whatever you want faith. It's all good. You can you can do whatever. Right. It's very very clear. Like we are being called to perfection our whole life, and there is everything on the line, your soul for eternity. So for a man to realize that and understand the hierarchy of how this works is super important. Which means God set it up this way for a reason. Him first. How many men can say, I'm truly submitting myself to God first before my wife, before taking care of my kids, before work, before all these other things, right? So that's a hard thing in and of itself. That's step one of being a warrior, a Catholic warrior, right? Now, again, depending on your vocation, where you're at in life as a man, you cannot neglect the other things that God has given you. If you don't have some sort of legitimate disability that keeps you from moving your body around and you're a man in 2024, you need at the basic level to be working out. Why wouldn't you be? You know, it's like we can't build virtue practicing the opposite. And, and I know personally because, you know, I, again, I was a fat Mexican kid stuffing my face with food all the time. That's not a virtuous thing, you know? And so, but that mixed with, again, your spiritual life, how you're acting as a man and as a leader, because, as men, we are leaders. It's our responsibility. God has called us to a very high level of responsibility as a Catholic man. And we got to take that serious, you know, so. What does it. Mrs. Catholic Warrior Fitness think about all oh. this? Oh, man, she is. <laughs> what, what is so beautiful about this, Mike, is besides every great man, I'm not even trying to call myself great because I'm nothing, man. I, I am a dirty, poor sinner, okay? But just for the phrase itself, is a fantastic woman. And let me just share, let me share something about my wife real quick because there's nobody more besides Christ and maybe Our Lady who has sharpened me up to be this man more than my wife. And this can happen for any man. A woman can be the number one motivator to change a guy's behavior and change his life. Sure. You know, and for me, my wife, dude, she is a soldier. She is hardcore. I'm talking the real hard work, the real Catholic warrior around this house with her eight month old. She's five months pregnant right now. My wife is bulletproof as far as her conduct and her behavior. It's how she's always been. And so, you know, when we were first dating, man, circling back to men as being leaders, I was leading my wife down the wrong path and she followed me. Like I was leading her into smoking weed and drinking and all this nonsense because inherently that's what we do as men. I was leading her down the wrong path. You were a stereotype and, Mexican or uh, uh, Chicana uh, uh, that Hollywood makes up. That's right, dude. That was my life. Right. I lived in that. And, and she followed me, unfortunately, into it. But once the reversion happened, my wife was the one that inspired me to be the man that I – and every day I'm trying to become this man for her. And for my family, like once a guy makes it more than just about himself, like how I used to do, that's when the magic happens. Once you you can selflessly say, you know what, I'm going to do this and be strong because she deserves it because it's my duty. They, they need me. My little son, when I look at him in the eyes, my eight month old boy, I know that he's going to look up to me and watch every single thing that I do. And so my wife, man, she has just played such a massive role. In, in shaping me. And this is what a good holy marriage will do because there's a friction between each other. Like me and my wife, totally opposite, dude. Totally opposite. 
she is completely opposite for me. She's very um, regimented and structured and just bulletproof, like I said. I'm that way now, but it took a long period for me to learn that, you know. But those are the beautiful things that have rubbed off on me from just watching her. Because there, during the first part of our, our um, relationship, I aspired so much to be like that because I respected her behavior so much. I'm talking everything clean all the time. Just ne- never miss anything, man. You know, it's, it's beautiful. And it can really shape a guy, you know, having the right girl. So did you um, uh, do you have any friends remaining from when you were a fat Mexican kid? Or <laughs> after your reversion, did they all like, ah, I hang out with Isaac no more, man. No, no, no. no. They leave you. Did, and if they did, then you made new friends? Right. That's a good question. Um, so there's a few that are like day one friends that are, that are just in my heart. I feel this attachment to them because, you know, I've known them for so long and um, they're brothers of mine. But it's funny you ask that because when the reversion happens, um, there's a friction there because, oh, all of a sudden Isaac wants to be a saint. All of a sudden Isaac wants to, you know, chase God. And and that's a common thing that happens when you make such a drastic turn. So initially, I will admit this openly. I made I took the wrong approach with not only my friends, but my family who are away from the, the church because I was overzealous. I had so much fire and zeal that I just beat everybody over the head with it, including my my friends who I used to live that lifestyle with, you know? And um, it does the opposite effect of what you want for people. You know what I mean? You need to answer the door? <laughs> oh, hold on. Dogs bark. It sounds like... <laughs> It sounds like Isaac has a, a couple of very fit warrior dogs somewhere in that house, too. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to shut him up real quick. Go on. That's awesome. Uh, Mike Church here with uh, Isaac Padilla. Uh, look, we're, we're, we're coming up near the uh, uh, the end here. Uh, let's talk about Shia LaBeouf for a minute here because I, I, your story is kind of – you're a young guy, and it's kind of reminding me of uh, some of what um, Shy, especially if you sit down and you watch Shy's interview with the uh, with uh, uh, John. Oh gosh, what's his name? The um, uh, the Punisher. Yeah, I know. I know you talking about uh, John uh, John Bernthal. Bernthal. Mm-hmm. That's right. If if, if 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 you watch his interview, you can tell that there is a sincerity there. And that there is a real sense of, man, I, dude, I was so messed up. I was so messed up in the head. Um, You know, I don't know what I was thinking. I was miserable, Um, you know. And the the thing that changed for him, it would be interesting to find out if his mother's name is Mary or Maria, was when his mother goes like, don't call me anymore. I don't want anything to do with you because he loved his mother. And that really made him sit there and go, what kind of a son am I? What kind of a man am I? Um, uh, and I, <clears throat> I think you know, contrast that to the slobbering, uh, a, 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 a attention whore grabbing, fake apology of P Diddy the other day. Oh man, I did this and I messed up. You know, dude, I don't hear any God in you. I don't hear any God in that. I hear you. I hear you. They're going to take your toys away. I didn't hear that in Shia's coming out with Bishop Barron and then with um, uh, with, with uh, uh, John. I didn't hear that. I heard God. I, I heard God talking. In in your story, I hear God, I, and I and, and and I hope that that comes through to people because there are genuinely men that, and women that have things happen to them, um, uh, and when they when when they convert and they realize that they have done these things and they did them to god mm-hmm. that this is what you know saint uh, is it uh, saint margaret of cortana who spends the rest of her life because she had one fling ding with one guy uh, out of wedlock <laughs> wasn't married and the things that he uh, that uh, that she did with him and she spends the rest of her life alone in a church with rats running around just praying yeah. god forgive me yeah. Uh, do you mean? I think that you, that, uh, you know Shia qualifies like that. It sounds to me like you had this kind of a of a story. You meet anyone else like that? You know, I, by the way, I love 
Sean's story and I would love to have a conversation with him because yeah, he, he just strikes me as a very genuine and, and authentic guy. And um, actually I have a, a friend who's, he was a music industry friend. He's a rapper. So he's like a big rapper in Los Angeles who um, is familiar with how Shia, I mean, Shia grew up in LA. Like right, he was right. in gang culture and stuff in LA, you know, which is really fascinating. But um, you know, me personally meeting somebody not on Instagram, I just, I don't really, I guess I don't follow too much. Mm, or okay. too much. I'll see these clips here, here, like every now and then that I'll watch like Shia was a big one for me. But um, yeah, I think, I think what's really important of what he was saying is the fact that he's owning up and he's being very raw and authentic. And, and I feel the same way in my life because there's nothing to hide, man. It's all going to come out in the wash. When we die, we have no choice. In fact, there's going to be two judgments. You know, your, your particular judgment, and then you're going to be judged in front of all the other souls in existence. <laughs> so there's nothing, uh, there's nothing that's going to – we can't hide. That, that's the way I see it. And uh, I think the more people who are willing to share their story. Cause there's so many stories that I've even heard through my DM from guys telling, sharing with me. I wish that they would tell people, you know why? What I've learned the most through this ministry so far is how God can affect the soul just by you sharing your experience. And I commend all of you. I encourage all of you listening out there to do that. Cause you just never know how you can affect the soul. You just you never know. You, know what I mean? you just don't seem like a bad ass to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I want to, I want to know the old Isaac. I want, I want to, <laughs> I want to see the night and the day uh, that you were the rap guy, uh, the music guy, and, uh, and now you're the you're the fitness guy. So you, I think you gave us a good uh, a good a good wrap up here for what you want guys to know. Uh, if some dude wants to reach out to you, do, do it on Instagram. Go to the website, which is CatholicWarriorFitness.com. Uh, yep. What do you? What, what, so either or, either or, CatholicWarriorFitness.com. You guys could, um, if you're interested in coaching, there's a consultation form fill out or reach out to me on Instagram. Um, that's at Catholic Warrior Fitness. I'm easy to find, you know, the big bearded Mexican dude. You find me. Well, so I got I got 20 pounds of extra tire here. The only place I'm fat. So maybe uh, maybe you and I work something out. And uh, you can be my. Uh, well, I'm already walking, so I already got at least the fitness thing and, and, and the prayer. So maybe you can help me with my diet. It's the bacon, Mike. It's you too much bacon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of things that it is, but it ain't the bacon. So uh, no, no I, I don't eat that much bacon. At least I don't think I do. Um, all right, uh, Isaac, thank you. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, you don't sound like a bad ass to me, uh, but <laughs> that's today. Uh, but you certainly look the athlete part. Thank you, bro. Do you play? Do you play any softball or anything? Do you, do you put any of those baseball skills to use? I got the bug now that we move back home. You know, there's slow pitch leagues out here, and, and I do have the bug. But this year, the, the thing I got to check off the box is the marathon this year. So I'm marathon training right now. Are you really? Is, uh, yeah, very, very tough, man. It's a whole different grind. I've never been a runner my whole life, but I, this year, I, I kind of did it as a like half a penance, but half of like a okay, I want to take this role serious. So let me do something really crazy. It's kind of how my mind works. And so, yeah, I'm in the midst of that right now, man. No, for uh, sure. My niece, who just got married in October, uh, married. She is like five foot two. She's a waif, and yeah. she married a six foot four giant, and he's a big boy. And we're praying for his conversion. Hayden, if you're watching, Mary is going to bring you into the church. So stop, stop. Now, Hayden. Yeah, stop. Just do it now, dude. Just, just, just stop what you're doing. In any nice. event, I got to. I, 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 he earned some respect from from me. Uh, not that I didn't respect him before, and I didn't know that he was doing this. The boy was training for two years to run the Boston Marathon. He got in. Nice. Dude. He That's just awesome. finished it. Wow. Wow. That's a feat. That's that's tough. I mean, as I've been training, I realize, and my hat's off, respect all you runners, because, man, my knees, I'm a big guy. You know, I'm not a small guy running a freaking marathon, dude. It hurts. So, yeah. 
<laughs> I imagine it would. All right, CatholicWarriorFitness.com, Isaac Padilla. Uh, actually, will, will, you, you will hear from me. And um, thanks for being on the You know, I'm, I'm, I was just going to make this a Mike Churchill interview, but wow. I'm going to make it a church doctrine since it went uh, uh, since it went long. What did you name? If you don't mind my asking, uh, what did you name your boy? Malachi is his name. Ah, okay. Awesome. Um, and, of course, you are married, uh, just so people that may be joining us uh, later, you're married to a Maria. Uh, well, a, a final question. What is your dad? What's your relationship like with your dad now? Is 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 he coming back to the faith? Is this something that, uh, the, that the guy, the culture warrior or the um, uh, the Catholic warrior fitness bros need to pray for? Yeah, no, in fact, my dad, it's the opposite. Um, He's good. Uh, my dad was the first one to do it, and he's the one that put in the work to bring us all back home. So nothing but respect to my father because he went from living a life just like me, and he, he fully turned his life. Now he works for you know, the diocese here. He works hand-in-hand -hand with the exorcist in the diocese, and he's just fully in there. So it's praise okay, God. Okay, last, last question coming up in a couple of weeks will be Isaac's first Father's Day. What's the most important thing you're going to do or you're thinking about for your first Father's Day? For my first Father's Day, um, you know what? I'm going to offer that up for, I think I might have a good conversation with St. Joseph that day. Okay. Because, uh, you know, as you know, he's very, very important. And just like any good man, you know, he's kind of left out of the conversation a lot of the times, but he's very important for this vocation. So. Well, not, not in this house. Itayad Yosef, guys. Always. Itayad Yosef. Go to, go to Joseph. Always go to Joseph. Yeah. Isaac, God love you. Mary, keep you. Great to meet you. I I, I, I wish, I, I feel stupid now. <laughs> because Magdalene is telling me, uh, I had this perfect interview for you. And, I, and then she tells me who it is. And well, she actually, she won't tell me. She goes, I'm not going to tell you until I actually get it booked. And so I didn't find out about it until two days ago, or, uh, two days ago. And then uh, she sent me the website. So I went and uh, um, I didn't, your website is very simple. So, uh, and I don't spend a lot of time on Instagram. I have an Instagram account. Um, uh, so I kind of went into this, uh, which is, uh, I like doing this in, uh, in church doctrine because if I don't go in with a preconceived notion, people seem to like open up. Yeah. And we had a great conversation. I I I I hope it's good for you, and I Absolutely. hope it's good for your Catholic, for the Catholic Warrior uh, Fitness and for your and, and for your vocation, brother. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. And likewise, I had a great conversation. And uh, you know, in the future, if you're down for for another, and even for my podcast too, bro, I would love to have you. Oh, That'd do it. Awesome. Mark it. Mark it. Send the invite. Okay. Cool. Let's do it, man. All right. Yeah. I think we're going to have Isaac on the Mike Church. I think I'm going to have you on the radio show. I want guys to hear you, hear you. It'll be a much shorter segment, but let's do a radio show. We'll get it set up. Uh, all, right. Uh, all right. That's going to wrap up this episode here of the Church Doctrine here with my good, my new good friend here. Uh, but I bet Isaac, un unlike Shia LaBeouf, he actually knows the dismount prayers for the rosary. Uh, catch all previous episodes of the Church Doctrine uh, on our YouTube channel and at crusadechannel.com and on my Substack, thekingdude.substack.com. Send me suggestions. Magdalene suggested Isaac to me. Look how that turned out. You guys out there are not filling my email box up at protonmail.com with suggestions for Church Doctrine inter interviews. Maybe this one will convince you that you should. As always, thanks to Isaac uh, Padilla for being with us. Thanks to Justin Redman, our producer. As I say always, we'll be part company here, my friends. We're not going very far apart. God bless you, and as always, Mary keep you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.